Hey, D-Dykstra here again with another great math video for you. Keeping it mathy, as it were. Uh, today, we're talking about integration, integrals of trig functions. So here we go. Let's look at some basics here. Let's review, if you will. So we got six basic trig functions. We have uh, the antiderivative of sine of u du is equal to negative cosine of u plus c. The antiderivative of cosine of u is positive sine of u plus c. Then we have the, the antiderivative of tangent of u is equal to the negative ln of cosine of u absolute value plus c. The antiderivative of cotangent of u du is equal to ln, positive ln now, of the sine of u plus c. And the antiderivative of secant of u du is equal to the natural log or ln of the absolute value of secant u plus tangent u, absolute value plus c and the antiderivative of cosecant of u du is equal to the negative ln of cosecant u plus cotangent u. All right, so let's look and see how we can put these uh, six basic trig functions into uh, work here. So example number one, we're asked to find the antiderivative of cotangent of one-third uh, theta d theta. So what we're going to do is we need to isolate this inside case. Anytime we have an argument that's inside a sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, etc., we know we're going to have to use some type of chain rule that will then uh, allow us to figure out what's happening with this function because one-third of theta means that the cosine function is changing. Normal cosine fu or cotangent function operates between 0 and pi over 2 because the cotangent function is undefined at those two places. Tangent is undefined between uh, negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So um, cotangent is between uh, 0 and pi. So we have to isolate what this 1 third is. So what we do is we let u equal 1 third theta. And then du uh, is equal to uh, one third d theta, as the you know theta, we're taking the derivative of theta, one third d theta. Now uh, we want to get d theta by itself because there's no other argument to get rid of. So we're going to actually multiply in this case by three to get three du equals d theta. That we can get d theta by itself. That means we have three cotangent of u right, u, du, and in that case we have 3 ln of sine of 1 third theta absolute value bars plus c. So anytime we go back to the cotangent u, remember cotangent of u was ln of sine of u absolute value plus c. So that's where we get the example number one. All right, example number two. Check it out. We have theta times the tangent of 2 theta squared d theta. A lot going on here, it seems like, in this problem. However, what we want to do is we want to isolate. How do we get rid of theta? Anytime we're outside the argument, we want to try and uh, get rid of that. So we say, what, what, if I took a u and I took the derivative of the u, could I eliminate or simplify this theta and d theta? So let's see what happens. If we let u equal this inside piece of 2 theta squared, then we would get 4 theta d theta. And now we want theta d theta, right? I've, I've isolated those. I've underlined them in red because those are the things that are outside the tangent function that I want to try and eliminate. And if I do, if I divide by 4, I get 1 fourth du is equal to theta d theta. 
Well, that is exactly what I wanted to get rid of. So here's my theta d theta, and that matches there. So now I can simply substitute that information there for that. So now I get 1 fourth tangent of u du as my integral. And now the 1 fourth will come out. Negative ln of cosine of u, according to the property that we had, absolute value plus c, which will then give me, I'll bring this negative outside. We'll get negative 1 fourth ln of cosine of 2 theta squared, absolute value, plus c. All right, let's look at one more situation. Example number three. Number three looks complicated. We've got a secant x and a tangent x. We're trying to find the antiderivative of that. And um, we notice that, well, if we have let u be the bottom piece, and here we're, we're I was going to, I, I I was going to rewrite this as 1 over secant x minus 1 times secant x tan x times dx. But I think we're all understanding that by now where we want to try and get rid of this numerator piece. And if we can, then it just leaves a 1 over u, which we're able to do in this case. So you, let u equal the secant x minus 1. The derivative of secant is secant tangent which you know, is great because then that gets rid of my numerator, uh, dx. And so then I can replace secant x tan x dx with secant x tan x dx. And I can simply substitute those in. Now all I'm doing is taking the antiderivative of 1 over u. And so that becomes ln of secant x minus 1 plus c. All right? Well, there you go. Telling you what. Uh, Integration is a lot of fun with trig functions, and so they don't call it trig functions for fun. Anyway, hope you have a great night. Thanks. Peace. Uh, keep it mathy. We'll see you soon. Bye.